Good morning. My name is Bill and welcome to St Benedict's as we worship together today on the third Sunday of Easter. If there's, there are any visitors who have joined us today online, you are most welcome and thank you for joining us. Our principal celebrant today is Father Dan, so please join us in our gathering hymn. Of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. To pour out your power and love as we see. We gather this morning in the love of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. A very good morning to you all, whether you're a regular parishioner here in our community of St. Benedict's in Burwood or maybe you've just accidentally stumbled across this link, you're online and you've never been to church before. Uh, I want to know. I want you to know, whoever you are, that you're very, very welcome. As we gather, and we just, as we just sung, we we gather this morning to open our hearts and open our minds to our God. We continue to hear from people uh, near and far. Uh, we, I just had a look through our 
uh, comments from last week's Mass in the YouTube uh, link, and um, I noticed that Tony from Bellingen in New South Wales, some of our old friends Steve and Megan from, from Western Australia, Lara from Canberra, Kirk from London, and one of our uh, ex parishioners Kim from Netherlands, had, had left a little note on there, so I want to thank you for just um, your encouragement and uh, letting us know that you're, you're with us in prayer. I think it's times like these, especially when we we appreciate the richness and the power of being part of the church family. Just a reminder, if you haven't already, to download the bulletin, which you'll find on the YouTube page or in our website. You'll find that the reading's there. There are some worksheets for children and, and parents. If you want to go to the next level and lead a little uh, liturgy for, for your children after Mass, there's a, you'll find a, a children's liturgy on there as well. I got an email from a parishioner this week just saying how much she was missing uh, her community, uh, how much she was missing uh, being uh, with uh, her brothers and sisters uh, in the journey of faith. Uh, but she did say that uh, there are some benefits to having church at home, like the fact that you don't have to worry about being late. Uh, I can see some parents of young children right now thinking, yeah, amen to that, that's we that's good. We like that. So whether you're watching us live or if you're watching a replay, uh, I want you to know that it's, it's really nice to have you part of our praying community. Some of you might be thinking, well, is there a benefit to watching it live? Like is there extra grace or something? Uh, my short answer to that would be I don't think so. I think what's most important is that we're deliberate about our prayer. We're deliberate about our worship. So we come in with a heart that's open a heart that's generous, and a heart that really is uh, seeking our God. So let's do that this morning. Let's, let's today, I want to encourage us to bring a heart of praise. If you're online and you don't really know what you're watching, uh, we call this gathering, as Catholics, we call it a Mass. And our Mass is, first and foremost, is an act of worship. It's an opportunity for us to take some time uh, out of our week to, to really... Uh, allow our hearts to give expression of our gratitude towards God. That's what this time is, is, is about, first and foremost. There's a psalm that, that, that encourages us to, to magnify God, which means to, uh, to recognize how great God is, how powerful God is, how good God is compared to our little lives. And so, I want to encourage you to, to really not just watch today, but to worship with us. To, uh, you know, worship, when we open our hearts in that way, it changes us. It gives us a new purpose. It gives us a new mission in the world. And that's the meaning of the word mass, by the way. It means to be sent. So we come to worship in order to be sent, to, to be sent into the world, uh, to bring the good news, to bring the, the light of Jesus into the world. So. So let's enter into our worship today as we always do by recognizing uh, our, our need for God, by humbling our hearts before God, asking for his pardon, his healing, so that we can be sent once again as his instruments into the world this coming week. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father, as the way into Easter life. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people, on each one of us, the spirit of truth, the spirit that, that helps us to see who you really are, who we really are, the spirit that frees us from the inside out. Christ, have mercy. And you are our good shepherd, the one who, who literally lays down your life for us, your sheep. You lead us into life eternal. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let's give glory to our God.
So from wherever we are watching and worshipping this morning or whenever you're watching this, we gather together all of our prayers now, all of our hearts, and we, we give them to God as we pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness in spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. Men of Israel, listen to what I am going to say. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God, by the miracles and portents and signs that God worked through him when he was among you, as you all know. This man who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified by men outside the law. You killed him, but God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades, for it was impossible for him to be held in its power, since, as David says of him, I saw the Lord before me always, for with him at my right hand nothing can shake me. So my heart was glad, and my tongue cried out with joy. My body too will rest in the hope that you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to experience corruption. You have made known by the way of life to me you will fill me with gladness through your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His tomb, his tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him on an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne, what he foresaw and spoke about was the res resurrection of the Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades or, and whose body did not experience corruption. God raised this man Jesus to life and all of us are witness to that. Now raised to the heights by God's right hand, he has received from the Father the Holy Spirit, who was promised, and what you see and hear is the outpouring of that Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. Lord, you will show us the path of life. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Lord, you will 
show us the path of love. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you are acknowledging as your father one who has no favourites and judges, everyone according to what he has done, you must be scrupulously careful as long as you are living away from your home. Remember the ransom that was paid to free you from the useless way of life your ancestors handed down was not paid in anything corruptible, neither in silver nor gold, but in the precious blood of a lamb without spot or stain, namely Christ, who, through, through, though known since before the world was made, has been revealed only in our time and the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you now have faith in God, who has raised him from the dead and gave him glory for that very reason so that you would have faith and hope in God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus, make your word plain to us. Make our hearts burn with love when you speak. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to, to you, Lord. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now, as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them, called Cleopas, answered him, You must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things? he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets, was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. 
Now, while he was with them at the table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognised him at the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. So last week I introduced a new theme which we're going to be exploring over these weeks of Easter and the theme we're calling Everyday Easter. I introduced the theme last week by suggesting that Easter is every day or it is no day. That's why we call our faith good news, because Jesus is risen every day. Every day we have access to Jesus' victory over death, each and every day. We could also say that Easter is now or it is never. The fullness of Easter that we will experience one day is only an extension of the Easter that we're prepared to believe in and embrace and live here and now. Every day Easter. It's the promise of Christianity. Now, I'm guessing that we're going to have mixed reactions to this theme, to this idea No doubt there are some of us that are thinking, yes, bring it on. (laughs) The more Easter, the better. You know, show me. What do I need to do? How, How can I live Easter every day? But some of us are probably noticing maybe a little bit of 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 a reaction, a bit of resistance to this idea. Maybe the thought of Easter every day you experience is a bit of a burden. You might think, oh. Does that mean I have to be hopeful every day? (laughs) Father Dan, do you know how hard my life is? It's a burden, that thought. Or maybe you you react with kind of frustration. You think to yourself, well, what am I doing wrong? You know, I'm, I'm trying my best to live out my faith. What else can I possibly do? If that's you this morning or whenever you're watching this, I want you to know that Easter life, doesn't really have much at all to do with doing more or doing better. Easter life has everything to do with seeing differently, doing things differently. As I mentioned briefly last week, to be an Easter people, we need to adopt or foster an Easter mindset an Easter way of thinking. There is a kind of rewiring of our circuits that needs to happen. St. Paul talks about the renewing of our minds. He says you need to be transformed into an Easter person by the renewing of your minds. As our minds are renewed, we begin to be able to see beyond what we see in the immediate, we, we, we begin to see through a new lens, uh, the lens of faith, uh, the lens of the resurrection, the lens uh, of a love that is bigger than death, the lens of Jesus' victory over the cross. That's something of what it means to have our minds transformed. In my opinion, this is the biggest challenge for us as followers of Jesus to make that shift from our our pre-resurrection mindset our our old way of thinking to the new mind a mind that's been transformed by Easter the mind of Christ 
St. Paul also says. We can see this uh, challenge playing out today in the gospel. Two of Jesus' disciples, they're walking along the road to Emmaus and they must have been close to Jesus because they knew all about his story. And clearly they were deeply disappointed. They were dejected by what had happened. And so Jesus, he intersects them on the road, just like he met Mary in her grief and Thomas in his doubt and the disciples when they were locked up in fear in the room. Jesus meets these two disciples in their disbelief. That's what God does. He doesn't give up on us. He continues to come after us, to meet us wherever we are. And they could see him. These two disciples, they were engaging with Jesus, but they couldn't see him at the same time. You see, they could see him, but they couldn't recognize him. The scripture says that something prevented them from recognizing him. What was that? Well, It seems to me that they were stuck in their pre-resurrection way of thinking, their old mindset. They weren't able to believe beyond, to see beyond their immediate circumstances and and, and how they'd interpreted those circumstances that, that experienced. All they could see was their disappointment, their, their, uh, pain, their grief, their disillusionment. And because of that, because that was their whole world, that was their mindset, because they were stuck in that old way of thinking, they started to walk away from Jerusalem. In other words, they were walking away from the promise, away from Easter. And so Jesus rightly says, you foolish men, so slow to believe, so slow to give up when something doesn't go as you might expect it to go. How true this can be for us, huh? We too can get so stuck at times, so consumed in our circumstances and how we interpret those circumstances that we aren't willing or or we aren't able to see beyond them. We, we, We become totally consumed in the old mind. Often, we can actually identify with our circumstances. They become the lens through which we understand ourselves. So I am the struggling single mum. Or I am the guy who uh, can't hold down a job. Or I am the guy whose marriage is an absolute mess. Or or, or I am the person who was cheated or, or, or taken advantage of. The list goes on. Like these disciples who are walking on the road, we might know all about Jesus. We might be praying to Jesus constantly. We might be active in our faith going to church, but, but we aren't able to actually recognize the presence of Jesus. We aren't able to, to believe or to embrace Easter life because our, our, our minds haven't yet been transformed, renewed. We're stuck in that that old way of seeing and thinking. As these two disciples were walking along, stuck in that old way, Jesus began teaching them. He was teaching them a a new way of having faith. He He was giving them a new lens through which to see. And, of course, that lens was God's word. It was God's promises which which ultimately led to the empty tomb. That was the lens he was giving them to to understand, to see, to recognize him, to, to, to recognize Easter. When we're able to look through this, this lens, we realize that there is so much more to our life than what we're experiencing right now. This lens helps us to appreciate that there is value in you and me that is worth fighting for, a, a value that, that, that Jesus has laid down his life for, as, as St. Peter reminds us today in the second reading. You see, 
Easter faith does not give up on life. It doesn't escape Jerusalem towards Emmaus. Easter faith, this lens that, that Jesus invites us into, gives us this ability to, to see beyond our circumstances, to believe, more importantly, to believe beyond our circumstances into a, and to be able to see the life that's bigger than, than our death, bigger than our struggle, bigger than our disappointment. St. Paul, I think, he gives us the best example of what it looks like to, to adopt this Easter mindset this Easter way of thinking. He says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. What Paul is basically saying is that, yes, this is still me, I'm still in in my body, but now I make a decision I make a choice to live according to my Easter identity. To my Easter, I decide now to put on an Easter way of thinking, an Easter mindset. Paul's saying, now I see myself according to who God says I am. Unconditionally loved, infinitely valued, redeemed and renewed by the blood of the Lamb. St. Paul is saying that is the lens that I'm making a decision now to see everything, to understand my life through. When we're able to do the same thing, when we're able to, uh, to live out our Easter identity, to choose it, it, it changes how we negotiate life. For example, when we choose to live according to our Eastern mindset, it means that we're no longer dictated by our regrets, by our shame, by our failure, because as St. Paul says, Jesus has paid the price for that. Now, I've heard a preacher uh, mention once that legally, our shame, our sin, our failure is actually no longer ours. Jesus has paid the price for that. He's bought it. And if we've given that to him, we have no legal right over that anymore, right? It's what it means to live out our Easter identity. It also means that there is no situation in our life that is ever helpless. Easter assures us that that is what the resurrection says to us, that there is always life beyond our darkness, our disappointment, our death. If we live out our Easter mindset, it also means that we start challenging those unhelpful ways of thinking. You know those thoughts that we can have from time to time? I'll never change. This is hopeless. This is how it's always going to be. I may as well give up. Those thoughts. When we put on our Easter identity, our Easter mindset, we start to challenge those thoughts, those ways of seeing. To put on our Easter mindset means that we identify ourselves now with God's life, no longer with our own interpretation but with the life of God that has been given to us and the life that we access through faith. We hear that coming out in the psalm today. The psalmist says, O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. You are my life. You are the one in whom I, I, I realize who I am. You are the truth that I look to, not what I might be experiencing on the surface. He goes on, I keep the Lord ever in my sight. Since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. God, in you I find my strength. 
even when circumstances are, you know, terrible. As long as I keep you in my sight, I shall stand firm. You are my life. You are my rock. You are my refuge. You can see that you can hear the Easter mindset, huh? The new way of thinking, the, the transformed mind. How do we live this out practically in our lives? How do we take on this Easter mindset? It can be so difficult, huh? Because that, that old way of thinking it has become, can become so ingrained in us. We can become so identified with those, uh, those parts of our life or that, that part of our story which has impacted us so deeply. So how do, we, how do we transition into the Easter mind? Well, ultimately, it's, it's God's work in us. It's the work of the Spirit. And as we invite the Spirit into our lives, uh, that, that shift will naturally begin to happen. But we need to do things to partner with the work of God, to, to partner with the work of the Spirit. And, and there's one very simple, everyday little tip I, I want to offer today. One everyday way that we can put on this Eastern mindset, and that is simply to make deliberate choices that affirm our Easter identity, that affirm who God says we are. So, for example, at the beginning of the day, we might say to ourselves, well, today, regardless of these circumstances that I'm facing, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to make an effort to smile because I, I believe that the power of the resurrection is in me. I'm, I'm going to make an effort to do my best to give God those negative thoughts that come up today in my, in my thinking. I'm going to make an effort today to look for the good in others instead of the negative. I'm going to do something today that I enjoy, that brings me life, that, that touches my heart, that opens me to God. I'm going to reach out today to someone who might need some support. I'm going to be generous, just as God is generous. I'm going to go out today and I'm going to get that professional help that I need. See, all of these positive, deliberate actions, I want to suggest to us, are actually statements of faith. They are very concrete, very practical ways that we are affirming that Jesus has paid a great price for me, that my life is valuable. There is more to my life than what I see right now. And so I'm making a decision today to live according to that value and to that life that God has given me. I'm going to align my decisions today based on uh, my Easter identity, the Easter promise God has given me and not on my circumstances, not what I see immediately around me. So we, we become an Easter people. We live Easter every day by adopting a, an Easter mindset, by choosing to do things that affirm our Easter identity. Is there a deliberate choice that, that you can make today or this week to affirm your Easter identity. You might look to an area in your life where you're kind of stuck in that old mind. And, and I want to I want to encourage you to think about what's something that you can do in the opposite spirit. Ask God to inspire you, just like he inspired the two disciples today to eventually make that decision to invite him in for dinner. That was the moment that they encountered the resurrection when they made that deliberate choice to get out of their kind of stuckness, their old way, to, to, to invite him in. Because of that, they encountered Easter. Ask God to inspire you in the same way, to, to, to be at work, burning in your heart, to give you that um, one thing that you can do today or, or, or this week that will affirm your Easter identity, who God says you are. Ask God to help you to, um, to make those choices, not just today, but every day, so that you can live Easter each and every day.
So let's respond to God's word by professing our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, on the way to Emmaus, Jesus unlocked the scriptures for the two disciples, then revealed himself in the breaking of the bread. As we long to be fed again from the tables of the word and sacrament, let us pray for a world hungry for good news. For church leaders and missionaries, that they will bear the light of Christ for all to see. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who bring us hope and love and joy in this time of global upheaval. May they lift our spirits and call us together in solidarity. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For our public officials, that they will strive to work for fair education, adequate housing and equal opportunities for employment for all. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence perpetrated by harsh words, deadly weapons, or cold indifference, may our homes, our nation, and countries around the world become havens of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for you to provide for Rohingya refugees living in in refugee camps in Bangladesh. Guide your people to care and support them to find freedom and rebuild their lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who contribute to suffer from the trauma of sexual, physical or emotional abuse, that they will have the courage to tell their stories and be assured of a genuine hearing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick on our prayer list. We also pray for the recently deceased, especially those whose anniversaries, anniversary of death occurs around this time. May they join the risen Lord and all the saints in the glory of eternal life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray together the prayer for COVID-19. Lord Lord Jesus, you travelled through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. We pray for those suffering directly from the spread of COVID-19, all who have lost loved ones and those who are fighting for their lives. We pray for the frontline health workers and all essential services personnel, especially those isolated from families and those dealing daily with serious sickness and health and death. Sorry. We pray for scientists advising governments and researchers seeking a vaccine. Give them the wisdom they need to develop the right solution. We pray for those facing financial ruin or extreme hardship as a result of the health crisis. We pray for those most vulnerable to the social, economic and medical effects of COVID-19, the frail, aged, the chronically ill, the poor, the homeless and all refugees. May they be fully valued throughout the crisis. We pray for all whose mental health is jeopardised by isolation and confinement. May the support of family and friends help them cope with this challenge. We pray for a spirit of neighbourly love May we not yield to fear and self-interest, but choose to put ourselves at the service of others. 
We ask for the intercession of all the angels and saints as we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Life-giving God, in the resurrection of your Son, you have brought a new world to birth. Make us wholly new in your spirit. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to lord you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Saviour Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, we, Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, all the clergy and all of your people, wherever they may be. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy, especially those we call to mind now. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Benedict and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and all honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other now a sign of God's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Who makes us an Easter people. Blessed are those who are called to this. The Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should enter under my roof. But only say the word. My soul shall be healed. Together, let's uh, welcome the presence of God into our hearts. We, we trust that he meets us always in our desire for him. So let's pray, pray out that desire now. Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you, and I unite myself entirely to you, Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus, you know that letting go of some of those old ways of thinking, those old ways of, of understanding ourselves, relating to the world, moving beyond that can be uh, scary. It can be like walking on water. It can be unsettling. I just pray now, Jesus, for grace that you would help us to make little everyday decisions of faith. Little choices to, uh, to choose our Easter identity, to, to choose the risen life, to, to live according to who you say we are, to live according to who you've saved us to be, Jesus. I just ask that you'd give us that faith. Help us to, help us to know what it is, what these little things are that we can do, Lord. To, to partner with you in, in becoming a, an Easter, Easter people. Just pray, Lord, that your spirit just touch into those areas of resistance that we might be experiencing in us, that those thoughts of hopelessness, or you know, maybe that's true, Father Dan, for someone else, but not for me. Just pray, Lord, that your spirit will just speak truth to those parts of us right now. would help us to see beyond, Lord, our immediate circumstances, to believe beyond them and to embrace the life that you offer us, that you assure us is there already waiting for us. May we walk in that and live in it and, and, and witness that to those around us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Thank you once again for joining us. I want to continue to thank all of our team who are working so hard at there is so much that goes on uh, behind the scenes, and so I just want to convey how grateful I am to uh, all those who help um, make it happen. Thank you so much, too, to, to our community. I, I said, um, I think the week before our, we were shut down, I was saying at the end of Mass, this is, this is a time for us to shine as people of God, as a church. And uh, I've got to say, I've been so proud as I've uh, heard stories and I've witnessed myself the generosity of our, our community, people reaching out to one another, supporting, caring for one another, reaching out to us. Thank you so much for those that are uh, you know, continuing to make sure that financially we're going okay and, and supporting us in, in other ways. I'm, I'm really just so grateful. A few announcements. We're beginning a new initiative this week, a parish rosary online uh, on Zoom, uh, which everyone is most welcome to. So Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. You'll find the link to the call on the bulletin today. Check out our website. There's always new resources that we're putting up, uh, you know, resources for growing your faith at home, for small groups. We've got the past uh, homilies on there. Uh, that's another big job that Dan's been working on uh, this week. Uh, and we've got, of course, the, the links to our weekday masses and Eucharistic adoration. This week we're going to be uploading a, uh, a worship set that the brothers, uh, a few of the missionaries of God's Love brothers, they recorded yesterday. So um, keep an eye on, uh, on our website. We're forming some small groups in the parish, uh, opportunity for us to meet online and just to you know, keep connected with one another, keep growing in our faith together. And there are all kinds of different groups, different ages, different states of life. So if you'd like to be a part of that group or you've got some questions about it, uh, again, you'll find the link to the expression of interest form on uh, the bulletin, I think also on the YouTube page. If you've got any prayer requests, please send them through. We've got a website dedicated to that and we've got people who are ready to pray for you. We've also got a new page on our website, which we're calling Community Updates. You'll see that the button on the home page. And that's a chance for you, particularly uh, parishioners uh, at St. Benedict's, to just, to just to give us a little update. How are you going? What's any new news in your life? Uh, how are you doing uh, with this home church thing? Uh, anything, just to update one another with how you're going. It would be really nice to hear from you. You can upload photos if you like. Uh, you'll find the link to that, I think, again, on the YouTube page and also on our website. Finally, if you are watching this and uh, perhaps you're new to the faith, you've got some faith questions. Uh, we've also got a link on our YouTube page 
uh, and there are people that are waiting to talk to you. Uh, again, via Zoom, there'll be private conversations. So uh, if that's you, feel most free after we finish uh, now just to jump on that call and, and we'll put you in touch with someone. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew, I've already done that, haven't I? I have. The Lord be with you. (laughs) May Almighty God bless you and all your loved ones, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. I will be your God who walks with you. You will be always within my head. Take your heart and give it all to me. Strong and constant is my love. Strong. Oh